Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, I will continue the proof of Engel's theorem. Okay. We have actually seen various versions of Engel's theorem. So, I except to one proportion, I have proved everything. I will recall what is that proportion and then uh, I will give you proof using the invariance lemma. So, what is that proportion? So, let uh, <coughs> g being uh, linear Lie sub algebra of some GL of V. So, we assume that V is a non-zero finite dimensional vector space over C. Okay. So, assume that all elements of G are nilpotent linear transformations. transformations of V. So, then what we climbed, so you can have a there exists a vector V in capital V such that it is annihilated by all the elements of G. Okay. We saw that using this fact one can actually establish a basis of capital V such that each element of G with respect to that basis can be represented as strictly upper triangular matrix. Okay. So, let us see how one can prove this statement. So, here is the proof. So, first we need to make some observations about uh, our uh, uh, Lie algebra okay. and then uh, we will actually able to uh, proceed by induction on the dimension of G. Okay. So, suppose uh, uh, like uh, so here is the thing okay. if we are able to prove G is actually nilpotent. So, let us do some work backward. Okay. So, let me do it in the side. So, this is some work backward. So, what it is what it says. Okay. Suppose G is nilpotent, okay, Lie algebra. So then, what happens? So then, you can see that this bracket G will be a proper subspace of G. Okay, so it is an ideal. It is also should be proper. Otherwise, what will happen? The derivative algebra will be equal to G. So, then you can easily check that any other lower central series element will be G. So, then G will be never nilpotent. Okay. That is why we should have the bracket GG is properly contained in G. So, now if this is true, then you can take any A which actually contains this GG okay. and we can also choose this A to be co dimension 1. That means the dimension of A plus 1 is G. Okay. So, dimension of A plus 1 is dimension of G. So, now if you take any A which is a subspace of this bracket GG, so which we can actually uh, do. So, since G modulo bracket GG is uh, abelian, so using this uh, ideal correspondence, so you can see that this A must be actually ideal. So, this A is an ideal in G. Okay. So, this is always true when actually you have this nilpotent Lie algebra. Actually, this is indeed true even for soluble Lie algebra because again if G equal to its derivative algebra, then it cannot be soluble. But unfortunately, we cannot make this choice of A. So, once you make actually this choice of A, now using the induction the proof is very clear. Okay. Let, let me complete the proof with the choice of this capital A. So, what is going to happen? You can choose Y which is not from A. So, then G can be written as A plus C Y. Okay. So, now since A is an ideal, so now uh, A being a subalgebra of G, G is nilpotent Lie algebra. So, that should imply A is also nilpotent.
Okay. So, that means, if we take uh, uh, yeah, if we consider our hypothesis. So, what is our hypothesis? So, this hypothesis we are you doing it for linear least subalgebra whose elements are actually nilpotent linear transformation. But if you slightly change this hypothesis to only the nilpotent linear Lie algebra, so then you can see that this A is actually nilpotent uh, li linear Lie subalgebra acting on this capital V. So, by induction on capital uh, by induction on the dimension of capital A, you can see that so this space W which is those vectors in capital V such that x v equal to 0 for all x in capital A will be non-zero space. So, this is just by induction. Okay. So, now using our uh, this invariance lemma, you can see that this w is g invariant. So, that is what invariance lemma says. So, in particularly w is y invariant. Okay. So, now if you assume that okay, all the elements of G acts as uh, nilpotent linear transformations, so that is also you can add it in the hypothesis. Okay. So, then you can see that this Y should act on W as nilpotent linear transformation. So, that would imply that this Y should have some okay, uh, non zero vector w inside w such that y w is 0. So, that implies this w is killed by all elements of x in g because g is nothing but capital A plus C y and uh, this w in w is already killed by capital A. So, this y also kills this small w. So, this uh, small w is killed by all the elements of this. So, this this argument actually tells you as long as you are able to actually come up with one dimensional sorry co dimensional one ideal inside g then you are done. Okay. But unfortunately, we cannot uh, use this g being nilpotent because that is what we are aiming to prove. Okay. So, we have to actually go around and then prove the same fact using some other method. So, what we will do? We will actually kind of use again induction on the uh, induction on the uh, dimension of uh, Lie algebras or vector space to conclude the same thing. So, for that, uh, so here is the step 1. So, now you can forget whatever I said. So, that is all this work backward is done. So, now what we do? We start with the Lie algebra inside G L V that satisfies our hypothesis. What is our hypothesis? Each element is nilpotent linear transformation of V. Okay. So, now what we want to do? So, we will actually start with what is called this maximal Lie subalgebra. Okay. So, that makes sense. Now, I can always take a yeah, maximal Li subalgebra of G. Okay. So, what we do? We actually claim that this A is indeed an ideal okay. and the dimension of this A must be 1 less than dimension of G. So, that is what our required uh, ideal that we were actually looking here. Okay. So, how do I actually uh, get uh, these statements? Okay. So, uh, for that what we do? We actually consider this uh, quotient space. So, we, we do not know whether it is actually again Lie algebra, but uh, quotient space makes sense. Okay. So, what do you do? You take this quotient space so, which is we call it G bar which is G modulo capital E. So, this is just a quotient space. Okay. We do not know anything about uh, uh, this space. So, now what we can do? So, we can actually define a linear map, okay. call it phi. 
So, from this capital A to this G L of this G bar, okay. how this map is defined. So, this capital A because it is a subalgebra of this G. So, this capital A will naturally act on this G mod capital A. So, that is the action we are talking about. So, in particularly given A we define this phi A. So, this phi A is a map okay, on G bar to G bar. So, how it is defined phi A of some x plus A okay, phi A of some x plus capital A is defined to be. So, you use this uh, subalgebra action. So, you take A x plus capital A. Okay. So, this is the action. So, why this is actually well defined? Let us check that it is well defined. Suppose x plus A is same as y plus A, then that would imply that x minus y is in capital A and that would imply that A x minus y, the bracket is in capital A as A is coming from capital A and A is subalgebra. Okay. So, that means this A x minus A y, so that is in capital A. So, that would imply that the bracket A x plus capital A is same as A y cap plus capital A. Okay. So, this actually tells us this phi of A is well defined. Okay. So, now once phi is well defined it is not hard to see phi is actually linear map. So, I will leave it you to check. Okay. This is something easy to check. So, what we will actually climb this is indeed a Lee homomorphism. Okay. So, the climb phi is a Lee homomorphism. So, if phi is actually Lee homosum that is actually just follows from uh, Jacobi identity. So, let us let us just check okay, this is not a deep thing. So, for A B in capital A okay, so what we do we just compute phi of A phi of B on this x plus A. So, we need to say that this is exactly bracket uh, phi of bracket a b acting on x plus a, but what is this? This is by definition you can see that phi of a phi of b minus phi of b phi of a applied on x plus capital A. So, which is equal to a bracket b x plus capital A minus b bracket a x plus capital A. Okay. So, if you take it out then you can see that this is a b x uh, minus b a x plus capital A. Okay. So, this is a quotient, but if you use Jacobi identity this element that is here. Okay. So, that element using the Jacobi identity can be rewritten as follows. This is just a b x plus a. Okay. So, what is that? If you just unravel the definition, this is just phi of a b applied on x plus a. So, this proves that phi of a b is nothing but phi of a phi of b. So, this verifies phi is actually linear uh, sorry Lie algebra homomorphism. So, in particularly I can uh, talk about this phi of capital A. So, this is actually a subalgebra of this uh, G L of G bar. Okay. So, that is what we wanted. Now, you can see that the dimension of this uh, phi of A is definitely less than the dimension of G g. Okay. So, because A is being a maximal subalgebra, so that is actually maximal means proper okay. because of that we have this is literally smaller. Okay. 
So, now what we can do? So, we have this phi of A which is a subalgebra of uh, this uh, GL of G bar. Okay. So, so, now we can actually use induction hypothesis if you know that uh, phi of small a is nilpotent linear transformation of this G bar for all a. Okay. But uh, so, uh, what is so we want to use induction. Okay. Now, we want to use induction induction on what induction on the dimension of this g. So, in particularly so I want to use induction on phi of a. So, to use induction on phi of a go back to our hypothesis what we need to actually check our g should have all nilpotent transformations okay, then only acting on some space. So, then only I will be able to use induction. So, for that I need to check this phi of a as on operator on this g bar must be nilpotent. So, if I check, so this is what we need to check. So, then we can actually say that uh, we can apply induction on phi of a, but what is phi of a? Phi of a if you think about it, this is uh, given on x plus a is nothing but what it is bracket a x plus a. So, basically phi of a is induced from add a okay. so add a on g okay, may be. So, but a is actually so a in g is nilpotent transformation that implies add a is nilpotent okay, that we have already seen add a acting on g. Okay. So, let us say I put g here add a acting on g is nilpotent. So, but since this phi of a is induced from add a, so phi of a also must be nilpotent because this is just a induced map. Okay. So, that tells us that uh, all these elements of phi of a Okay, where A is coming from capital A, this consists of nilpotent transformations of this G bar. So, now we can use induction on this uh, uh, on this uh, subalgebra okay, phi of A in inside G L of G bar, because G bar is also smaller dimension. So, if we use induction then what we get? We have to get some x that is killed by all this phi of a. Okay. So, so take non-zero element x okay, that, that x should look like some y plus a inside your g bar. Okay. This is a non-zero element. So, that means y is not in a such that this phi of a on this y plus a should be 0 this is true for all capital A in capital. But what is phi of A y plus A that is A y plus A. So, this should be 0. So, that means the bracket A y is inside capital A for all A in A. Okay. So, in particularly if you take this A tilde, so which is span of this y and then capital A. So, then this actually becomes a Lie subalgebra of G containing capital A. Okay. So, but A is maximal. Okay. So, that would that would say that a actually must be equal to a tilde or a tilde must be equal to. So, a is being maximal implies and y is, is also not in uh, capital A by the choice. Okay. So, this is non-zero that means y is not in capital A. 
So, these two things implies this A tilde R should be equal to G. Okay. So, what we have done? We have, we have proved that G is equal to A direct sum, some one dimensional space. Okay. So, it is clear that using this equation, this capital A okay, must be ideal inside A tilde. Okay. So, this is the equation. So, what this equation says? So, A is already a subalgebra. So, the only element that is not in uh, A which is in A tilde okay, as long as the base is concerned is this Y. But this Y is actually kind of leaves this capital A invariant. So, add Y in leaves capital A invariant. So, that it is immediate that A is ideal inside A tilde. So, that implies A is ideal inside G. Okay. So, this way we are actually able to construct uh, ideal of co-dimension 1 inside G using our uh, information. So, now once we have constructed this then as I said, so you can actually construct uh, uh, this uh, subspace. So, because A is ideal inside G, look at this W which is uh, those vector in capital V such that uh, that, uh, that is killed by the vector is killed by all X in capital A. So, since A is an ideal, so this W is invariant under G. Okay, using the invariance lemma. So, now uh, this G is nothing but A plus C Y. So, this Y must leave W invariant. Okay. So, that will imply that uh, Y will act on W, but Y is given to be nil potent element. Okay. All elements of G acts as nil potent transformation on capital V. So, in particularly Y restricted to W is also nil potent. So, that implies there will be a vector some w small w such that y w will be 0. So, that is the w that we want okay, because already a w is 0 for all a in a and then y w is also 0. So, that implies x w is 0 for all x in g. Okay. So, that is the w that is uh, wanted in, in, the, in the proportion. So, this proves actually that uh, our proportion. So, with this proportion we have actually completed uh, uh, the proof of Engels theorem. Okay. So, the main uh, important uh, okay, thing about uh, Engels theorem. So, let me recall that uh, to verify uh, G is nil potent it is enough to verify all the elements of G are uh, okay, add nil potent or not. So, the that is one characterization and uh, from that one can see that if G is uh, nil potent. Okay. So, then uh, what you can prove? So, it is G is nil potent inside some G L of V. Okay. So, then uh, Okay, so, sorry what we have proved, uh, we proved that uh, so we want to get actually a basis for any nil potent thing. So, let us start with uh, arbitrary thing and then see what we are getting. So, we want to get uh, start with G let us say arbitrary nil potent E algebra. So, then what we know? Then we know that any element of G is add nil potent. Okay. So, that is very clear. In particularly we can use uh, the Engels theorem E2 dash version for this add G. Okay. So, add G is sitting inside GLG. So, now there exists a basis B of G such that 
this add g with respect to that basis sits inside n of dimension g comma c okay so that is what we have proved so far so for any arbitrary nil potent lie algebra okay so you can find a basis b of g such that so all the elements in add g look strictly upper triangular matrices but of course the elements that comes from the center they are lacked zero so they don't play any role okay so if you include the elements of the center as well okay which which only contributes to the uh, contributes to the zero so this actually can be replaced as follows so you take only add x okay with respect to this basis where x is now you can take it to be any x in g so this is also inside you are strictly upper triangular matrix because if x is coming from the center add x will be zero so we don't need to worry okay so let me actually uh, give you one interesting characterization of uh, nil potent lie algebra and then i will stop okay so this can be now proved using uh, uh, this uh, ingles theorem okay so this is actually true only for the uh, complex lie algebra okay let's not let's take it to be complex so g is just uh, arbitrary lie algebra over c okay again finite dimensional we have to assume okay always that is there so here is one of the characterization okay so what is this characterization maybe you can call it e3 so this is actually says g is nilpotent if and only if every two dimensional sub algebra of g must be a bn okay <coughs> so let's prove this so for the if part uh, if, okay <coughs> <coughs> sorry <coughs> so g is nilpotent uh, will imply that any sub algebra of that uh, g must be nilpotent okay so in particularly if you start with the two dimensional sub algebra so then by the classification of two dimensional sub algebra we know that so let's say d g das is two dimensional sub algebra then by the classification g does either has to be abelian or isomorphic to non abelian two dimensional but the thing is we already saw that this two dimensional non abelian is soluble but not uh, sim, no, but not nilpotent so that means so this choice is not there because any sub algebra of a nilpotent lie algebra is nilpotent so that means g das must be abelian so this is fine for the converse part assume that all two dimensional sub algebras must be abelian so we have to prove g is nilpotent to prove g is nilpotent it is enough to prove that uh, if you take some element x inside g that is actually the add x of that must be nilpotent okay so let us say add x is not nilpotent if add x is not nilpotent then what will happen uh, so it will have actually some eigen uh, value which is non zero if all the eigen values are uh, zero then add x must be nilpotent so you can assume that it has non zero eigen value so in particularly there will be a eigen vector corresponding to that eigen value let's say lambda so the bracket xy will be lambda y for some lambda non zero inside c and y in g so now look at this equation so this bracket xy is being lambda y so phi by actually normalizing it back you can see that lambda inverse x is y is just y so you can replace x dash by lambda inverse x 
and then y by y, y dash by y, then this span of x dash and span of y dash. So, this will form a two dimensional non abelian Lie algebra. Okay. Why? Because it is easy to check, uh, uh, it is actually a sub algebra because bracket x dash y dash is just uh, y dash. Okay. It is obviously non abelian. So, this proves that uh, there exists a non abelian two dimensional sub algebra. So, which is contradiction from the hypothesis. So, G must be nilpotent. That means all, all add x must be nilpotent. That implies using Engel's theorem, G is uh, nilpotent. Okay, I will stop here. We are running out of time. So, I will continue in the next class uh, with the proof of Lee's theorem.